what's up everybody? It's your man, Pastor Jay. Listen, you are watching the Millennial Corner on the I Crave TV network. Today, we're featured with four special guests. Starting from this way, we have Minister RJ. Y'all give it up for him. Yeah. Dr. Brian T. Pleasant. Elder Dianca Hart and Minister Kenya Shavers. Now what we're gonna talk about today is balance. How do you deal with being saved, considering all of us are ministers and preachers of the gospel. How do you deal with being saved and still ratchet? <laughs> right. So we're gonna start with Kenya. Kenya, how do you balance this out, being saved but still having a little bit of ratchet locked up in you? <laughs> how do you deal with it? Um, I think lately I've kind of really come to the conclusion that I'm still figuring it out. Um, I'm only 22. And I'm a college student, right. um, but I also work an eight to five corporate job. <laughs> um, and so I really have to find that balance when being in a corporate setting, being a college student, being a preacher, um, being the oldest of a lot of siblings, I'm still figuring out that balance piece and how to um, be 22 and be saved and still live my life so I kind of find myself traveling more and just kind of living life the way that I define it like and I'm, I'm extremely cautious because I could be in certain places and the right song come on and I completely forget about <laughs> everything else right. all that ratchet comes flowing forth so that's hard that's hard RJ how do you feel about listening to certain music balancing listening to certain music and keeping that ratchet locked up until the right moment Oh man, I think I'm like Jeremiah, it's like fire. <laughs> uh, shut up in my bones. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I'm in the right place and Boosie said it all, come on and I'm repeating it like Psalm 23, but um, I think the balance the balance is knowing that I'm covered um, by my father. And um, in my father's eyes, um, I'll never be turned away. I can do wrong, but he's always gonna love me. Right. And so um, I, I enjoy the balance of um, the secular in the divine right at the same time and knowing where my foundation lies that um no matter how much the world can influence um those around me it won't influence me right now let's sit and talk about music for a moment i always feel like for me one of my first loves was music period mm -hmm. so i was an r&b songwriter before i did gospel i wrote many r&b love songs when i was young more than I did gospel songs. And I feel like R&B music is just a testimony of what you experience with love. Mm -hmm. Versus some people saying oh, we shouldn't listen to R&B, we shouldn't listen to rap. Bianca, what's your take on that? Okay, well I believe that since we're talking about balance, it has to be a balance there. And I can only speak from myself and know that some R&B songs I can't listen to. Right. You know, but that just happened over time where I matured and I realized like, okay, this song will take me to this place. Mm -hmm. And since I've overcame that, I can't go back to this. Right. So it's like you have to know, um, like I don't listen to Beyonce. And a lot of people think something's <laughs> wrong with me. But I know what I did when I listened to Beyonce. Mm -hmm. So now it's just like I'm just not going to. I don't even have the desire to. But I still listen to R&B. And sometimes you... You know how they say music puts you in the mood? Right. So, like, if I'm about to go to a photo shoot, I'm not going to listen to Miranda. Right. <laughs> you know, that's not going to give me what I need. Or if I'm going to a birthday dinner or something. So, I think it's that you have to know what kind of music um, actually takes you to a place, like, prepare you for where you're going, basically. Right. Right, such as have any of you heard Tank's most recent album? Right, help me I Lord. can't do that. Right, I cannot do that. My sisters will help play us, Lord. the number one song <laughs> all throughout the house, and I was trying to get ready to preach, and they were playing it all week long, and I was like, "No, y'all, I'm I'm fighting to get this song out of my spirit because it puts me in a terrible, terrible place that I'm fighting to stay out of." So, Doctor Pleasant, how do you feel about that? Um, I just think that it has to have balance. I'm probably that one pastor that's a little different um, because. I want people to be human, right? Mm -hmm. And I want people to have balance. And so for me, I'm Greek, you know, I got frat brothers, and when I'm with my frat brothers, I'm not Apostle Brian, I'm just mm -hmm. Brian. I want some meat on the grill, um, and I know that there's some just extremists out there. I grew up in a very extremist religious house that you can even watch TV. Mm -hmm. And so it's important for me now to show people that you can be saved, 
You can be sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost and still have balance. So if you get in my car and you hear my hear me listening to something, I don't want you to be like, oh, God, because I'm not going to speak in tongues 24 hours. Right. I didn't get three babies 14 months apart, you know, <laughs> listening to, you know, Praise stuff. <laughs> right. That's just not what it was, you know. And right. so I don't think we do enough teaching to for people to be human. So now people don't even want to be Christian right. because they feel like I can't be Christian and be human. Um, can I go have a drink or can I not go have a drink? Right. I'm 22. Am I supposed to go to the club? You know, Ken Kenya, when she started ministry, that was her big thing. Like, I can't go to this. And I'm like, man, you're trying to pledge. You're trying to do all this stuff. And you have to be sociable. Right. Like, that's that kills your network. I mean, Christian networks are so small because we don't want to embrace anything else. So I'm that pastor that you're going to see at the Fantasia concert on the front row, right. clapping and singing all the songs, yeah, all the the songs word for word. <laughs> and when she start worshiping, I'm going to lift my hands, too. You know, and, and people don't think we can do that because what we've done is we've separated the sacred and the secular. Right. And we don't realize that that great divide, you know, was something that put God even outside the box of how he used wow. people and how he used music. Wow. That's interesting. All of you have given interesting perspectives on that. Let's talk about tattoos. Now, right. before we started the show, we were talking about tattoos. Now, I happen to have two and I want to get more. I don't want to turn into an ink addict, but I want to know what you guys think about that. Ken, let's start with you. Well, I have three tattoos. <laughs> I had to count. I have three tattoos and counting. Um, and I grew up holiness. I grew up <laughs> where I couldn't wear pants and there were no TVs. And my aunts would tell me that, you know, I was going to hell because I had holes in my jeans. Um, How are you going? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, for a long time, that was my battle. Like, do I get tattoos? Like, do I not? Um, and now I'm at a point where um, I, I completely, completely created my own re revelation in the Bible where it says that Jesus um, had King of Kings and Lord of Lords written on, on the inside of his thigh. Come on, that's a tattoo. And so when my mother said to me, you don't need to be getting tattoos, I said, well, you need to go read your Bible. <laughs> because it, to me, Jesus had a tattoo. Right. It said King of Kings and Lord of Lords. How else did it get there? And so now there's no um, argument about, hey, I'm going to get another tattoo tomorrow right. because to everybody else, that sounds like a tattoo. Right. But I have tattoos that I plan to get more. So I personally don't see a problem with it. And I think that that's um, another battle with millennials and, and right. Christianity. Do all of us up here have tattoos? Yeah. yeah. I want I wanted yeah. to yes. give some perspective. <laughs> because I, I think what has happened is religious people make me itch. <laughs> And I just don't do that religious thing because, you know, they'll take Leviticus and say, well, the Bible says you're not supposed to mark your body. But it said to the dead, the dead right. you know, it didn't say anything else. And so I'm like, if you want to judge me and send me to hell for tattoos, then the verse before you eat catfish, you're going to hell. The whole chapter. You cut your hair. You're going to hell. Yep. You know, you like tilapia. You're going to hell. Yep. And you wear, you know, Mixed wool blend. School. I mean, right. so so we take one portion of scripture mm -hmm. and we try to ju try to justify that. And I think that as a creative, you know, um, that's my expression. I have old ink and current ink, right. and that's my expression. And so I don't think that God really looks at that. I think it's the motive behind it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so I see people, they say, hey, you ain't supposed to have tattoos, but they have a rest in peace grandmama shirt with I the mean. picture on it, you know? <laughs> so you've become a walking memorial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I just don't, I don't have anything, you know, I don't see anything wrong with it. I think that um, it's really a display, and it's, it's creatives, and certain industries want more of it, you know what I mean? Right. I see some people, they got tattoos all over their face and their neck and everywhere but they're tattoo artists right. mm -hmm. that industry wants that I would never do that as an entrepreneur just because one I'm older and there's just a certain thing as a father I want to mm -hmm. display but then you know just certain arenas that I'm in even in the church world even though I have them uh, I don't want to offend anybody right. mm -hmm. the Bible says if eating meat offends your brother then don't eat don't so what I do is I try to keep my tattoos to a place where I can cover them mm -hmm. so if I'm going to preach at a holiness church mm -hmm. and I know how they feel I'm I'm not right. going to beat them down with the word saying, you going to hell too. I just put on a big robe, amen, cover. and I cover up my tattoos, amen. and I, I give them the illusion of whatever they want. And after I'm done, I go put on a short sleeve shirt, and they be like, I shouldn't have listened to him because he right. got... <laughs> <laughs> too late. <laughs> right. Too late. Minister RJ, you want to chime in? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. So my ministry started, or it has birthed right in the hood. And um, for me to talk to people who deal with things on an everyday basis, 
they only trust me because I look like them. Yeah, um, that's good. I, I speak their language, mm-hmm. and we com- uh, communicate on a equal level. Mm-hmm. And so when we come to talk about tattoos, and I thank you for the revelation to um, with Jesus in the tattoo because um, <laughs> that's right. that's that's new for me now. But um, I noticed you said that it, it said King of King and Lord of Lords, and to me, it's the perspective and the intent of what mm-hmm. tattoo that you have on mm-hmm. your body. Um, some things just shouldn't be put on your body. Right. Um, but what is the what is the background? Um, Pastor Hold Pastor Pleasant says all the time. Um, do you take a woman to jail? For stealing, if she's stealing to feed her kids, mm-hmm. or she's stealing just to steal, right? What's the motive? What's the motive? And so, when you go to mark, go to start marking, marking your body. What is your motive? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, what's the intent of your tattoo? What's the purpose? What's its meaning? Mm-hmm. And um, and everything, you must have a purpose and an intent right. behind it. Mm-hmm. That's good. I just thought of some stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Well, for me. Right, the whole sermon. <laughs> I, I think that um, having a tattoo is not an issue. As they already stated, it's about your motives. Mm-hmm. But also, I've never been convicted by having a tattoo. And I believe if you have a relationship with God and it's something that you're not supposed to do, God will give you that conviction and man really can't give it to you. So when people tell me, you know, like you shouldn't have, one of my aunties the same way, she's like, well, you shouldn't have tattoos. I have several. <laughs> And I mean several, <laughs> double digits. And um, people wouldn't see them because as the Apostle said, mine are in different places mm-hmm. that I could cover up when need to be. Um, I do plan on getting more. I have become an ink person. It's just, it's kind of <laughs> addictive. But um, it is one tattoo that I kind of, I wouldn't say regret, but I had to repent for because the headspace that I was in, I got it because I was emotional mm-hmm. at the time. You know, I was dealing with something and I was just like, I'm finna go get a tattoo and it's gonna say this, but it was right. in, it was like intertwined with what the situation was. And so it kind of brings <clears throat> back some of the memories of mm-hmm. that situation. And so it all goes with your motives and how you actually perceive what it is that you're doing when you touch your body. Right. I wanted to say, I think dispositionally, dispensationally, mm-hmm. things are changing now because you have tattoos for people who are on chemo, mm-hmm. their eyebrows are yeah. falling out. Right. Um, I've seen some very interesting tattoos recently of people who have hair loss and just other stuff. Um, and that goes to an opposite extreme as well. Right. I saw um, a transgender male getting a beard and it was kind of tattooed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that dispensationally you have to kind of put that in perspective as well because we see tattoos of drawings and stuff on mm-hmm. arms. But what about the person who had to get their eyebrows done because right. they have terminal cancer? And they just want to look normal when they go out, you mm-hmm. know. So it's a lot of different um, things that I think that we have to kind of establish before we start to judge it because we don't understand it. Mm-hmm. Bianca, you said um, you got a, there was a tattoo that you got when you were younger and you were going through some things. I want to stay there and talk about that for a moment, guys, because I feel like this. Um, we've all made mistakes, correct? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When we were younger, we did a lot of things. Yep. Mm-hmm. Now, we're talking about balance. So let's talk about we were younger, we did some things, and then we learned better, but we kept doing those same things. Like, I feel like at about 18, there were some things that I realized I wasn't supposed to keep doing, mm-hmm. and I kept doing them because they felt good, and it had become a part of my life. Let's talk about some things, let's say knowing better and doing better. Let's start with Ken. Let's start with Ken. Um, I think for me, that switch was probably when I was about 17. I was a senior in high school. Um, And like I said, I grew up holiness and my grandparents raised me for a large part of my life. So um, there was that wisdom piece where they kind of taught me right from wrong. I knew right from wrong. I knew what I shouldn't have been doing. I knew that the things that I were doing um, weren't right and they didn't feel right. Um, But we, 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 get caught up or I got caught up um, in trying to please Kenya, right? right? And wanting to do what I wanted to do, no matter what. Um, And no matter what anybody said, going against everything that I was ever taught. Um, But that also came with a lack of relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because um, my relationship at 17, even though I grew up in the church and we went to church six times a week, prayer, Bible study, 
a choir rehearsal. Sun my grandfather was my Sunday school teacher for most of my life. Like right. I was in church all the time, but my relationship with God was not what it is now. Right. Yeah. And so um, Apostle often says that your belief breeds your behavior. And so now that um, my belief in God and my relationship with God breeds my behavior towards him um, and towards the decisions that I make. So that's where that's where the difference lies. That's so good. And that's exactly what I mean. Like I knew better. You know, like you said, there are some things you realized by 17. You kept doing some and you stopped doing some. Those are exactly the things that I mean. Like eventually we figure out. Uh, I want to correct me if I'm wrong. Paul is the one who said that when I was a child. Spoke. I spoke as a child, you know, and then I grew up and I put away childish things. Mm -hmm. Let's stay there. Let's talk about that. RJ, um, what are some things or just elaborate on knowing better and then doing better? And I like I like how you um, phrased that, Jay, because um, we were just speaking. You were saying we knew mm -hmm. and to say that we knew is the past tense. But to say that we know. Right. Um, dwells in the presence of where we are now and even now to where I am in life it's a lot of things I know better that I still am not doing better mm -hmm. on um, it's a day to day struggle mm -hmm. even so. once your relationship is strong with God it doesn't make that make your actions um, perfect and in line with God right. and that's the blessing of grace and mercy right um, there's some things that I deal with on a day to day basis, especially being fresh into ministry or walking fresh into ministry that um, the flesh is just weak to. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we're, we will die mm. battling the flesh. Um, spiritually, we can be in tune as, as much as we want to, but the flesh dies daily. Right. And um, on, standing on that fact, um, we'll always deal with things that we know that we should not do, mm -hmm. but do not um, align ourselves accordingly with. And I think that that's, that's why we have um, the gift of discernment mm -hmm. and the, um, the benefit of prayer and having a relationship um, with our, not only our spiritual father, mm -hmm. but um, our father with us in heaven. Right. And the unfortunate part is, like, like you said, Ken, um, and, and both of you have said, is that there are a lot of things we knew of, but we didn't really know. Like how I believe a lot of us know of the Lord, but don't really know him for ourselves. Um, there are many, many things that the church <coughs> does not teach us. You know, they'll tap at it, but they won't really attack it. And that's dangerous, especially when we're young. You know, we hear a lot of, growing up holiness. You hear a lot about don't wear this, don't wear that, you know, but we don't really digest it because of its approach or because of how it was brought to us. So I think uh, I, I preached this sermon labels. Uh, for Easter. That was good. Yeah. Preach the sermon labels about how labels have been attached to us because of different things that we've done and that's almost how we see ourselves now but nobody really took the time to teach us mm -hmm. not to do it. You know, yeah. they teach us everything else. Now the church teaches a lot on getting rich quick, mm -hmm. uh, increasing faith, prophesying money when you get home it's going to be in your backyard and all that kind of stuff but we're not really attacking mm -hmm. the issue. Mm -hmm. Suicide is on an all time high. Yeah. It's always been an issue, but now it's even higher and even mm -hmm. more crazy. And I don't feel like we're really dealing with these things. Mm -hmm. And we, I feel like a lot of our generation doesn't really know how to deal with them because nobody else from the church is helping us mm -hmm. or teaching us about those kind of things. I Dr. Pleasant, yeah. you're the wisdom on the stage. Talk to me about it. Um, well, I think that everybody has process mm -hmm. right. and um, everybody's process is going to be different. So to try to bring these two questions together, I think that what we did when we were younger and then we knew better or know better, mm -hmm. um, I think that it's just process, you right. know, and I'm glad that I make some of the mistakes that I made. Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm glad. I mean, I messed up a whole marriage to try to be successful in another one. You see what I'm saying? So the things that I learned through the divorce actually is helping me to do better. This to do better. Right. This, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And um, I messed up credit. I messed up, um, you know, all kind of stuff. <laughs> um, and I, I knew better and I know better. And so even in my young 40s, there's some stuff that I know better that I'm like, OK, I'm still, you know, kind of doing. So I had a diabetic scare um, and I lost all this weight. 
you know, and everything to get rid of this diabetic scare. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, now I'm still eating the same stuff. Right. And, you know, and, and, and my, you know, everybody keeps saying, you know better. You need to leave, leave that cheesecake alone. <laughs> um, and so I think that it's just process. You know, my diabetic scare was a part of my process to do right health wise. Mm -hmm. And so even now I can relate back to a diabetic scare, right. if that makes sense, mm -hmm. um, to even push me in my knowing better. So I think that is all process. But I think that, you know, you're right. I think that we have to make sure that we're the ones that's being transparent after we know better and after right. we process to be able to teach that we're ministers right. of the gospel mm -hmm. and so you can only coach me through what you've been through right so when you look at everybody's that's process like yeah when you look at your process you had to go through that so that you can be effective now mm -hmm. as a minister I mean if you had not have gone through what you went through and made those things how can you pull somebody else out of the thickets right in that in that particular area yeah. right transparency very valid point. Transparency, especially in balance, you know, being transparent. Bianca, what do you think about transparency and, you know, saying, hey, this is like RJ said, he's able to reach people that see that he looks like them. You know, he doesn't always have on a, a clergy collar and all of that. Bianca, how does that work for you, being transparent? Showing your scars, I'll say, because I do like to say that everybody don't need to know your story, they just need to be right. able to see the scars. Right. You don't have to right. share the story, yeah. just share the scars. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, um, transparency is very important. And what I mean by that is, I know, as RJ said, I can't minister to anyone if I don't meet them where they are, if I don't let them know mm -hmm. that I've been through some of the same things. And just like you said, some things I'm not at liberty to share at this moment. Right. <laughs> but, you know, I can kind of work my way around it and you can kind of imply or not. Right. However you want to view it. But um, it's very important because even as a millennial, I know that in church, People are not transparent, mm -hmm. and especially some of the um, seasoned saints. And so, mm -hmm. even with my mindset, I'd be like, "Girl, you can't tell me nothing because right. you ain't been through nothing." And the fact is, is that they probably have, but they have not sh told right. me. So, even for example, um, for us single women, you know, they're always like, "Wait on God, wait on God," blah blah. But you married. Right. So how, how did you, you're you not telling me. Right. Yeah, you know, if you had a story behind it. And so that's like right. my whole goal. Like, I want to be able to share this experience of waiting to another young lady. Like, right. exactly this is what happened. Mm -hmm. It wasn't always easy. This is a, I fell at this Emotions. point or I did this or wh whatever the case may be. But I want to be open because if you're not open, especially to millennials, right. we just completely like... Yes, girl by or boy by, <laughs> however, but it just seems like for me, men are more transparent than women. Most definitely. All the time, because I know my past is very transparent, and I know yeah. apostles very transparent. I heard, but women, it's kind of like we hide behind it. We don't want people to know this is what we've been through, and it could be because we're still hurting in some areas. But for me, I know that we overcome. Right. By the words of our testimony, so I'm going to be very open. Um, I've shared things with Kenya, just only knowing her in such a short time but it was like I felt the need to share right. and transparency is very important and I think that's the only way that ministry can grow and we can reach the millennials because everybody like well what can we do to reach the millennials how can we bring right. just tell them the truth right. mm -hmm. that's all right yeah most definitely most definitely, and, and I can carry on. I'm sorry if I'm jumping. No, go ahead, go ahead. Um, and in the, in, the, in the, my greatest two, I have two great examples. Um, first was when I um fell in love with my spiritual father, um, Pastor P. Um, we were on campus, and Pastor P said, "Uh uh, it's sundress season. I gotta get, I gotta get out from here." <laughs> And so um, that was that was my uh, relatability. I'm like, I understand your struggle. Mm -hmm. You know, now you can t now you can you can guide mm -hmm. me because I see the path in the life that you're living now, and I understand that you have those same mistakes. And so, and my other one was back at home in Mobile. My um my pastor um, um Pastor Terrence Burrell um in high school I got caught smoking weed, and so um he brought me into his office and he was scalding me. <laughs> And the first thing he said was, I used to smoke weed back my day, back in the day, we knew how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and I was yeah. I said, really? Right. <laughs> and it was like this light bulb that went off on in my in my mind of like, okay, so now I understand that you know exactly where I'm at and mm -hmm. where I've been. Mm -hmm. And now I can trust you to guide me through this situation. Right. Um, and in life we get and the church has, has ran so many people away 
because they they're acting like that they've never been in the shoes mm -hmm. that we in. Um, we say a lot of times that you can, you can never clean a fish until you catch them, and so many times we're trying That's to good. clean fish before we catch them. Um, I urge to the people I talk to and, and I crave is that we no longer start catching fish, but we capture fish, wow. because when we capture a fish, a fish has the um, ability to still live yeah. mm -hmm. as we try to clean it and transform it to where it's supposed to be. And so if we start more capturing people with, um, first of all, showing them that I'm human, mm -hmm. that I'm just like you, that I've sinned just like you, that I've struggled just like you, but I know the answer and the solution to my mm -hmm. sin and to my problems, then we can begin to reform the church into the direction that the intention of it was supposed to be in the first place. That's so good. Right. Yeah. Can you want to chime in on this? Um, I think transparency is also important, not only in a one way, like the, the older Christians, the older saints can't just be transparent with us. We have to be transparent with them. Right. Apostle always tells us um, that he can't cover what he doesn't know. I say the so, same thing. <laughs> so, so as a pastor and as my spiritual father, I know that there are some things that I just have to divulge. Like there's some things that I just have to sit and tell him. Mm -hmm. um, I went through a situation back in January where there was something that happened when I was younger that somebody brought back up and I was like in tears and I was bawling and I was like, I thought this was over and I can't believe this is happening. And he was like, yeah, people are going to lie on you. But I was like, yeah, no, dad, but it's true. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. no, this really did happen. Right. And so I really had to be transparent with him and be open with him because, for one, um, I could have lied about it. And he, he probably the Holy Spirit would have told him. But for a moment, he would have trusted that what I told him was the truth. Um, but in order for him to properly cover me and to properly guide me through the horror story that was happening before my eyes, he had to know the truth. I had to be transparent with him. So as millennials, we have to understand that if we want transparency, we have to be transparent. Right. And the Bible says, Revelations, we overcome by the words of our testimony in the blood of Jesus Christ. That's a statement of transparency. Right. And like people are not coming over because people are not transparent enough to actually say, hey, this is the real reality. Right. You know, we testify in part and that's not scripture. Mm -hmm. It says we prophesy in part, right. but it doesn't say we testify in part. You got to test a, if you're going to have a testimony and even if you give a partial testimony in the court system, they'll put you in jail mm -hmm. because you didn't give the whole sum of it. Right. And so I think a lot of people need to be held in contempt in the church because there are many people who have not come over because their transparency has not been in full effect. And so a lot of people are stuck in thickets, not because they don't want to come out. They're stuck in thickets because the transparency that would have released them um, did not release them at the moment. And so what we're going to give account for when we get to heaven as Christians, some of it is you were not transparent enough. Right. Yep. And so because of you, they stayed in bondage right. because you didn't have the right to tell how I brought you out of it. I mean, you wanted to cover and look you know, saved and sanctified and all of that, but you're talking about the abortion. Right. <laughs> and you chose to hide that. And so now other people are stuck because of what you chose not to say. Right. Okay. I love how balance and vulnerability work, have worked hand in hand in this. I love that we're on the same page when I can't heal what is hidden from me. So I've enjoyed this conversation about balance, understanding balance and transparency. Amen. I thought that was my cute wrap up. Oh, you got 20 seconds. You can pray. Let's pray. <laughs> God, we love you. We honor you. We thank you, Father. Help us to understand how to balance our lives out according to your will and according to your word. Also, God, help us to be transparent so that we can help someone else heal. We love you. We thank you. We trust you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Amen. All right.